Hey everyone, I'm Shannon Mayer. Thanks for joining us. In today's tutorial, I want to show you a couple of things with spotlights in Daz Studio uh, that will really make your experience using them a lot easier and you'll probably get much better results. Uh, so why don't we get started? So we have our scene set up here. I'm using the Genesis 9 figure. Uh, the character is Monica, and you also probably noticed there's a rather interesting environment going on here. I um, thought it would be nice to take a quick look uh, and show you what this asset is. I know very often when I watch uh, videos or tutorials, I'm wondering uh, what assets they're actually using. Uh, so if we pop over here to uh, the Daz 3D website, um, the creator is Stone Mason, and they do some amazing environments. Um, I think you pretty much never go go wrong if uh, if it's stonemason, but we'll take a quick click through here uh, just to see the kind of environment we're working with. Um, naturally, we're, we have our own lights and stuff going on, so uh, kind of uh, towering it to our needs. Uh, but some really beautiful stuff here. Uh, all right, so let's pop back over to Daz Studio. So we have a variety of lights illuminating the scene, and the character has a primary spotlight on her. So if I turn off the spotlight, um, we can see that she falls into deep shadow. Uh, so we get some nice results using a spotlight. And what I want to show you here today is a couple of interesting ways to use the spotlight to really improve your experience with it. So here we are back in texture mode. Uh, what I'm going to do is clear out the spotlight that we're currently using in the scene. And we're going to start from the ground up. Uh, so I'm just going to delete that. And now what we want to do is we want to switch over to perspective mode. This is a really nice way for uh, starting and creating your spotlight. Uh, so we can move it around and position it generally where we want, um, but it's not overly important. We, we will adjust the position afterwards, and I'm going to show you a really, really great way to do that. Uh, so what we're going to do is come up here. I'm going to zoom in for you. So create a new spotlight, and I'll zoom back out. And it's going to have a couple of options here. Now, the default apply, and the other one is to uh, generate it from our active perspective view. So I want to click on that and press accept. So now we created a spotlight. Um, if you've used spotlights before, um, the default setting on that, the light is really low. If, you're, if it's your first time using it, you might assume that, it, that it's you and um, you've done something wrong. But what I'm going to do is uh, over here in parameters, I'm going to click on the light setting and open that up. Um, now you'll see uh, photometrics. And I will zoom in here for you. Um, so we got our, our lumens, and it's defaulting to 1500, which is extremely low, and you can barely uh, see it in the scene. Um, so usually where I start is increasing this to 50,000. So I do this before even taking a preview look in the scene uh, because we're really not going to see anything. So what we're going to do while we're still in perspective mode, it's important that we didn't move the camera at all um, because we're going to uh, create a new camera. So I'm going to go up here to the Create menu, Create New Camera. And now let me just zoom in. We're going to create an, a, a new one from our perspective mode. Um, there's two additional options here. We have the uh, default and then two others. We want the second one down. Copy active view perspective mode. I'm just going to hit accept and zoom back out. Now, the reason we did that, it's going to become very uh, uh, clear shortly. Um, but I'm going to zoom over here, zoom in on our scene. And we see the spotlight that we created from the perspective mode and the camera that we did the same with. I'm going to take the spotlight and drop it into the camera. Um, and now it is connected to the camera. 
So now that we've created those, we're free to move our perspective or around. I'm going to turn off the environment here so we can see uh, things a little bit better. But I'm going to rotate around. And now we can see the spotlight and the camera that we created. Let me zoom in a little closer on those. OK. Uh, so we kind of have them overlapping one over the other. So to avoid any confusion, I'm going to rename the camera that we created here. Uh, so I'm going to call it uh, Camera Spotlight. And I'm going to zoom back out on our scene and find our character. Uh, I think now we can probably turn our environment back on uh, and we can see that the spotlight is active in the scene here. So if I turn that on and off. Now, you can see even maybe more clearly now, um, the camera and the spotlight um, that they're connected. Uh, we can still move the spotlight independently, um, but it is now connected to our camera. And now I'm going to show you why we did that. Uh, so uh, here's our main camera. And just like any other camera, a spotlight, you can, you can look through it as if it's a camera. So we're going to do that right now. So here's the spotlight that we created. I'm going to click on that. And now we have a view from our spotlight. Uh, now, we can also move it around like it's a camera, theoretically. Um, so I'm going to start moving it around, and then we can use this for um, di direction and targeting in our scene. But it, it's a little odd to navigate with. I, I, I really don't like it. I find it um, nothing like using a camera, which is why we created Camera Spotlight. Uh, which it, it, the spotlight is connected to. Um, hope that's kind of straightforward. Um, but when we go into the camera spotlight now and we're looking through that, that spotlight is connected to our camera. So wherever we move our camera, that spotlight is going to follow. Um, so I find this so much easier to navigate and direct around the scene. Um, so if we want to, you know, have a, a low view of our spotlight uh, looking up on the figure this way, uh, it's really nice moving it around like this. Um, but before, when we were in the spotlight view, um, and we try to move around, it, it doesn't feel anything like that to me. So I find it so much easier uh, just taking the minute creating a camera for the spotlight and connecting them while they're in the same position. Um, that's why we generated it from the perspective view. So now that we have them connected, um, you can you still have the ability to move the spotlight around independently, but you really don't want to because then it will separate from its exact position with the camera that we created uh, to connect it to. Um, there is one exception uh, to this. Um, it's actually important to know that, that you can do this. Um, so if we go into parameters, we will see, let me find it here, uh, our light geometry. Um, by default, the spotlight is a point light, but we have the ability to make it a rectangle, a disk, and so on. And when we do that, um, it can wind up blocking our viewpoint. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to make this uh, a rectangle here. Um, now I'm going to go back to perspective mode. Uh, I think I'll probably just turn off the environment here. Um, so. I'm going to circle around so we get a look at our spotlight. So we're not seeing anything here. Actually, we really won't see it until we generate a, a render. Um, so if I'm going to, uh, I'll do that right after. Um, but we created the rectangle. And here's our diameter and our width. Uh, default is 10, so that's pretty small. Let's turn this up to 100. And let's turn this one up to 100. And I'm going to generate um, 
an iray render here so we can see it and now there's a large plane so if we come over here and we go to our camera spotlight um, it it gets in the way of our view now a way to resolve that is actually uh, rather either easy I'm gonna go back to texture view and <clears throat> excuse me back to our perspective view so we can see what's going on uh, I'm gonna zoom in nice and close to these and here we have the spotlight, um, which, as I said, you know, we can we can still uh, move it on it on its own. Um, so we can do it either um, uh, with a, a scroll bar or physically in the scene. But as you can see, it can move back and forth. So I'm going to undo that. So this is exactly where it was before. And if we take the Z axis. Um, and we move the light back a little bit behind the camera, right? So it's still really close. Um, from our vantage point, we're really not going to notice it. And then, um, actually, I think you could even see that I have it slightly on our, on our camera here. I think our view perspective kind of starts somewhere in the middle of the camera. Um, so we don't have to pull it back too far, like all the way back. Um, but let's take a look in our scene. I'll go back to camera spotlight and I'll create a NVIDIA render here. And I don't see any distortion um, from the light being our, in our way. Uh, so we should, be, we should be perfectly fine now. Uh, I'm going to turn the environment back on. Uh, we're still on the camera spotlight. Um, so we can position our spotlight however we want, uh, perhaps a nice uh, three-quarter above view. Um, this is around where we started originally. All right, and now we can go back to our camera main uh, for our main view within our scene. So I hope that this makes your experience using spotlights a little bit easier and a little bit more enjoyable. Until next time, take care.